Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Low Carb Lifestyle Podcast. Today, I have the honor of bringing you Pauline Swinkles. Um, thank you, Pauline, for joining us on the podcast. Oh, it is absolutely my pleasure, Tracy. I'm very excited to join you today. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. I know this is uh, the first time you've been on a podcast and I've assured you my listeners are so easygoing and are just so curious to hear your story. So thank you for taking the plunge because it's never easy to do something for the first time as we know. Uh, look, no, when I read all about you, Tracy, um, it was a natural thing to do because uh, like you, I'm very passionate about what we do um, and that is help teach people to become well and um, I thought we've got to get the word out there so yeah happy to help share your story and help share my story so we can inspire as many people as we possibly can. Beautiful Pauline well do you want to start by just sharing with everybody a little bit about uh, what you do now and then what led you into the low carb space? Okay. Well, I'm a registered nurse. I've been nursing for um, 39 years. Um, my primary areas of practice were in the operating room. So I was a theatre nurse for many years. I'm, I was also a midwife. And during those years working in theatre and as a midwife, you know, I saw a lot of instances of disease. And certainly in the 39 years that I've been nursing, that the, the way disease has changed uh, has was sort of really a little bit scary. Um, like 39 years ago, um, when I started nursing, only about 3% of the population had diabetes. And now we are looking at up around 39%, which is really, really frightening. So the diseases that are associated with diabetes and metabolic dis uh, dysfunction are becoming more and more prevalent, things like autoimmune disorders, which hardly existed when I started my nursing training. Also things like gestational diabetes and, and all the associated problems with that for the mother, for the baby, um, and for the baby later on in life. People underestimate the impact that these diseases have on themselves, but also on their growing children. And I sort of became more and more aware of that as I as my practice um, went on through the years. And I thought, you know, we need to educate people more. We need to help people understand so that we can stop these things from happening. But I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know I didn't know how to help them because I realized that the current medical training wasn't sufficient. It wasn't giving people the information that they needed. Then um, most recently in the last few years, I've been working in a, a, a skin clinic. Um, I do medical skin treatments and I've been seeing a lot of adult acne coming through the door, a lot of people with autoimmune disorders like psoriasis, perioral dermatitis, um, uh, eczema um, and all these sort of things that are definitely exacerbated or made worse by poor diets. And, you know, whilst I can recommend treatments and creams and, and, and medications to help fix some of these things, it still wasn't cutting it. You know, there, there was something else. There was something missing. And my partner actually found the key um, a couple of years ago. Um, he had Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid dysfunction. Uh, he'd been suffering from that for many, many years. He had he was on medications for that as well. He also had insomnia. He had tinnitus and vertigo as well. And he knew that he could um, make himself better. He hated being on the medication, but he wasn't sure how, so he started researching. And he found the Nutrition Network. So Nutrition Network is a uh, was founded by the Noakes Foundation in South Africa and it's a learning platform for doctors and nurses and dietitians and, and people who are interested. So even lay people can go on and do the courses. Uh, my partner did that. Um, and he did the advisor's course and through the advisor's course, he learned how to change his diet and his lifestyle and he fixed his Hashimoto's. He is now medication free. He dropped about uh, 12 kilos effortlessly. 
Um, and he's the fittest and the best that he's ever been in his life. He can't believe how good he feels now. And while he was doing the course, I was sort of hovering in the background and listening to the lectures. And I thought, wow, you know, this is amazing material. This is such good stuff. Um, and so I jumped on and had a look at Nutrition Network as well. They have a lot of courses for all sorts of different people. While well, I started working my way through them, I've done them all now and I've just blown away. <laughs> Oh, no, they're amazing, Tracy. I have to tell you, I have learned so much. And yeah. when you've done a course, the good thing is, you know, because there is a lot of information, you can't always remember everything at the same time. You can actually go back and re rewatch the lectures. You can redo the videos. So, you know, once you've done it, you can do it, go over it again as many times as you want to. So it's um, accessible to you all the time, which is such a great resource because I've found myself many times, and I'm sure you have as well, you know, sometimes you come across across a client who has a particular problem and you think, oh, you're not quite sure, but you, you remember that you heard about it in one of the lectures, so you can go back and have a look. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just such a fabulous resource. So I'm very grateful to Prof Noakes and all the team at uh, Nutrition Network for being amazing teachers, absolutely amazing teachers. Mm. They are an amazing, uh, you know, group of people. I'm very much in, in tied to them as well and I've done a lot of their courses as well. And uh, um, I, I love I love it because they make everything so accessible, as you say, and, you know, they're just constantly staying at the the top of the game and constantly you know pushing the boundaries and trying new things and you just recently did a certification through them which is like the first in the world of of this of its kind could you talk to us a little bit about that while I try and just manage the sun and and not yeah. look like I've got <laughs> it it's just peeking through there right now but I'll just I know it. it's lovely that it's a sunny day in the middle of I winter know, isn't it yeah I know it yeah. is beautiful in Melbourne of course it doesn't happen that often so I'm just leaving it there to get my vitamin D <laughs> yep good on you so yes yeah, so the certification course is the first of its kind in the world it was um it sort of developed out of a need I think um you know, the whole low carb movement, which is now, you know, involves thousands of practitioners around the world, which is very, very exciting. Uh, they realised that to gain as much uh, momentum, but also uh, respect, I think, from peers, they had to develop a course that allowed for certification um, or, yeah, a professional notoriety, I guess, uh, in the field of low-carb uh, nutrition or therapeutic carbohydrate reduction um, for the use and for the treatment of various medical conditions. So we know, um, yeah, through the science that, and the science is happening all the time, and this is also the wonderful thing, everything that we've learned through the courses but also during the certification pathway is based on current science. And the wonderful thing is that there is new, there are new studies happening all the time, there are new, there's new research happening all the time. And, you know, the people at Nutrition Network plus all the other wonderful people involved in this um, in low carb around the world um, have access to all this fantastic material. So it's evidence-based, it's proven science. You know, it's not something that someone's made up and, you know, and, and trying to push a fad diet or something like that onto people. It is actually proven by science. And this is a way of helping what we do become um, a recognised branch of science rather than just something, um, you know, that, you know, some keto uh, fad diet that is, is, is the current fashion of the day. It is way more than that. And we know that now. We do. And I'm interested in how that plays out for you here in Australia, because as we know, there is a lot of dragging of feet and a lot of head in the sand in a lot of um, the professional 
areas around the rev, um, around low carb being recognized. And, you know, as you say, the science is there. It's been there for a very long time, but it's just been buried and people either choose not to see it or don't want to see it because it's not convenient, whatever, you know, their reasonings are. But I'm interested in this certification. Does that have any recognition here in Australia and how has it changed? What has changed for you now you have that? with your work has anything changed not at the moment so like I'm building my own uh, low-carb practice Mm. Um, so my goal is to try and educate as many people as possible you know in into the wonders and the health benefits of a low-carb lifestyle Um, certainly uh, you know because it is new um, you know there were nine of us who started the course Uh, from all around the world. So there were two from the US, two from Canada. There was one from the Netherlands, um, one in the UK, uh, one from South Africa and myself. Um, Only seven of us actually passed the course. So I have to say it was pretty tough. Pretty hard, yeah. Um, Yeah, it was hard. It was um, a lot of hours of reading, a lot of researching. Uh, We had to, we were posted um, every week. We were given questions that we had to answer. We had online classes as well. Um, And, yeah, and then we also had to present a case or had to do a case study. So, yeah, there was, my days were chock-a-block with my work at the skin clinic, I work with my low carb clients. I literally did not have a spare moment. It was pretty full on for the for the couple of months that it took. But it look, it was just amazing, and it was, oh, um, gosh, yeah. I learned such an incredible amount, and having the uh, the teachers from nutrition network including prof noakes as one of our mentors so we had prof noakes we had hasina kaji who is just the most amazing she is uh, her knowledge is unbelievable uh neville wellington who is just such a wonderful doctor in his field he has yeah he has his own general practice he's reversed hundreds of patients with type 2 diabetes and help many 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 more with their obesity problems you know he's he's an inspiration as well and uh tamson uh tamson murphy who's the dietitian again such a wealth of knowledge um they just know such an incredible amount they really challenged us uh but that was great and as a group we were able to see each other's answers to the various questions. And so we learned from the group as well because everyone has different experiences and everyone has, yeah, and in different parts of the world, it was really good to see how they do it, you know, everywhere else. I mean, basically we're all the same, but, you know, there's a lot of pressure in different countries around the world from different areas, like particularly in the US, the big pharma really, really pushes really pushes the pharmacology um and that's something that they're going to have to really uh work hard i think to try and change the minds of a lot of doctors i think here in australia and it's been interesting in my profession you know in my own low carb business and i'm sure you've experienced this too tracy um getting great results with my clients who have then gone back to their doctors who are amazed to see this transformed person work walking into their office um it actually makes the doctors think oh well what's been happening here and i actually now through because of that have several doctors who refer patients to me which is great and i think you know um, i've only been doing you know teaching low carb for a year now uh to my clients but my practice is sort of snowballing because i'm getting a lot of referrals from doctors as well as from my other clients and i'm sure the same's happened to you so yeah we've got to get the teaching the doctors that there is another way apart from medication uh, I think is the big one, changing their their mind, you know, the way they think, getting them away from, you know, writing a prescription, offering clients an alternative treatment uh, other than medication. And it's good. I think more and more people now are asking for a non-medical approach. Doctor, do I need to take that medicine? 
is there a different way that I can do it? I actually have two ladies I'm coaching at the moment with diabetes who don't want to take medication and uh, they're doing it exceptionally well. So, uh, yeah, it's really, really good to be able to uh, to help people who want a different way. Yeah, and I think that's it. You know, that's always, well, not always, but I suppose in the last seven years since I've been in the low-carb space, that's kind of my issue that, you know, I think it, giving we, we need to give people that choice. You know, we can't really decide for them. Um, you know, I know it will come down to the individual doctor's comfort level um, and knowledge around low carb too. But, uh, you know, given the, the choice, I think if you ask most people, they would say uh, they would rather not be on medication if they don't have to. And I think for the ones that say they do, that really is because they're not, they've never been given the option or they there's fear around it, there's fear around the change, they're just not sure. And of course, that's where people like you and I come in to really help, um, you know, demystify a lot of that, you know, like I said to you in the beginning, you know, like anything we do that's new is uncomfortable and, and might bring up discomfort, but we can certainly um, work through a lot of that. And we know that it's it's not going to last. Um, so I think it's it's always been my passion to show people there are options out there. And if you're not happy with what's happening at the moment, you know, you, you are entitled to find someone who will support you and um, yeah, I love I love what you're saying, and I think you're right. I think it is really a groundswell, and it you know it's definitely not going to necessarily come from the top down. It's going to come from the bottom up, and I've seen in just in my time, you know, well, I'm nearly 48. I was 40 when I had my epiphany because I was <laughs> getting unwell, found Noakes and all of that as well, and um, you know, it's changed a huge amount just in that time. You know, there is so much more knowledge and information out there and you know of course like anything not all of it is necessarily accurate or is right for the individual and that's where people do really benefit if they see someone like yourself to really find their own path because it looks very different for everyone doesn't it Pauline if you how have you how have you seen I mean if if you you've kind of been coaching this way for a year but obviously it's been a few years that you've been in the space so what have you seen change already in that time um mm, ooh. yeah look certainly there is a growing awareness people are um definitely more eager to find a different solution um and and look i have to say it's great to see more doctors getting involved um just a funny a, a interesting anecdote uh one of my clients had um she actually came to see me for weight loss mm -hmm. but she had um a condition where she produced way too many red blood cells, hemochromatosis, and she'd had this condition for 30 years. So wow. every, yeah, for a very long time. So, and every three months she would go to her GP, uh, he would write a PATH form, she'd go and have her bloods checked and invariably would need to go to have some uh, blood, like a litre or two taken out at the blood bank because she had too many. And this has been her life for the last 30 years. So um, we started, and I was aware of that when we started. We started doing low carb. She lost about, um, probably about five or six kilos. It was time for her to go. She'd been going about six weeks. She uh, time for her to go to a GP for her regular blood test. Um, he rang her when the results came back and said, I'm really worried, something's wrong. You have to come in straight away. And yeah, I know. And she was, oh, you know, anyway, uh, her blood results came back. And they were perfect. There was nothing wrong. Her her iron levels and her hemoglobin was actually within a normal range. First time in 30 years. He suspected that she might be bleeding from somewhere internally. So he sent her to a gastroenterologist who and requested a gastroscopy colonoscopy just to make sure that everything was okay on the inside. She came and she did. She went and had those tests, which actually proved to be unnecessary, but she had them done and everything was fine. And the gastroenterologist was very interested in her story and um, he had heard that low-carb could benefit something like hemochromatosis 
and uh, did a little bit of research anyway. He's referring clients to me now, so I'm... <laughs> So I'm helping. Yeah, it's really good. I'm helping ladies with um, Crohn's disease and uh, diverticulitis and also ulcerative colitis. Had some great results with ulcerative colitis as well. So yeah, it's it's interesting how um, you know the more and more patients that get out there and have these. Uh, her GP described it as a as a miracle cure or a, a spontaneous. Um, um, Cure of <laughs> I know. Yeah, it just happened all by itself. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And but now, you know, since he's seen her a couple of times, and she's lost a lot more weight, and her her lipid panel is looking fantastic. Her triglycerides are right down. Her cholesterol is fantastic, and everything else is just looking so well. And she's looking amazing and feeling fantastic. Um, you know, it does make them sit up and take notice that yeah. there is more to this than just weight loss, that there is a hell of a lot more to this. This is disease reversal and it's actually happening before their eyes. And when they see that, I think that is definitely what's going to help win more and more of the doctors over. We've mm. just got to try and educate them. So, mm. yeah. Absolutely. What do you think's happened with the hemochromatosis and low carb? How do you think... Um, how do you think that's helped reverse that condition? Okay, well, actually, I um, I only heard about this uh, the weekend just gone because um, at the uh, Low Carb International All Stars Conference, I don't know if you managed to catch that with Paul Mason. Oh, I missed it. I'm still and trying to Peter catch up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Look, it was great. And uh, Paul Mason actually mentioned hemochromatosis in one of his talks. And it has, it is definitely um, her miracle cure has definitely come from her low carb lifestyle. So it, it definitely is caused by the change in the lipid panel that changes the way the um, the blood uh, or or the yeah how we metabolize iron. So the ferritin stores and everything and the way we metabolize the iron stores in our body. But it is definitely has come about. Look. Um, Paul described it very eloquently. I'm nowhere near as clever as he is, but uh, yeah, it was definitely um, definitely as a result of her low carb change that has uh, brought about her metamorphosis, which was really good. And there's so many stories like that now, and I, I think um, you know I love the fact that the doctors you know will just say it's a miracle just because they don't kind of understand it but that's okay because that's yeah. that's kind of mm. going to make them curious and I think that as you say the more they see the more they'll they'll want to see more and want to be curious I laugh like with my mum I helped my mum um, transition to low carb she's nearly 80 now and um, was kind of four or five years ago she finally sort of you know wanted to listen they take a little while family sometimes Yay. Um, yep. <laughs> but we got there and she's you know come off all her medication she was on blood pressure medication for most of you know her adult life and um anyway but she just has loved it so much and you know she she goes to a low-carb doctor now but originally she she did sort of go back she had a little bit of a was a little bit uncomfortable didn't want to change wanted to sort of keep in with the doctor she'd always been going to see and eventually she just went and she just said she bought she took a copy of Peter Bruckner's book a fat lot of good and just said Yay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> read this yes yeah yeah <laughs> and yeah you know I, and and the doctor was like well said the right thing said you know but she she doesn't go back to that person anymore but um you know I think it it is it is great we can only just do what we see and I just say, look, you've got nothing to lose but everything to gain by giving it a go, you know. As I said, yes, it, it can be hard. It, it does require changes. It does require giving up food that you've probably eaten um, and have a whole lot of attachments to for, for had, and have had for a very long time, but it's possible to do it um, and, you know, it's just one step at a time. And, you know, when you compare it to, I mean, how scary is it if you you get a diagnosis or, you know, you think that something isn't wrong with you? I mean, health, it is so important and we do take it for granted until we risk losing it, don't we? And, um, you know, yeah, I think the, the more, as you say, the more we talk about this, the more we can get people curious, the more they will do that and that will just have that um, this amazing flow-on effect to doctors and other people. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, it's important to educate people that, you know, whilst they may have had a diagnosis of arthritis or mm. Crohn's disease or um, diabetes, any of these things can be treated uh, in a different way or non-pharmacologically, but you've just got to have an open mind and find someone who can help you. Um, and I think this is where what we do is really terrific because we have the knowledge to be able to teach people and find the information and to change their life. And it's interesting, and, uh, and I know that you've seen it all the time in the people that you've coached, um, yeah, when they first come to see you, they have, you know, discomfort, they have, they get reflux, they get wind, they get bloating, they have all of these um, aches and pains, they have all these uncomfortable symptoms. And then when you transition them into a low carb lifestyle, and all of these discomforts magically disappear, you know, the bloating, the wind, the, the aches and pains, the um, you know, all the symptoms that were giving them so much discomfort, the reflux, mm -hmm. when they disappear, they think, oh, and, you know, you ask them, oh, how are those achy joints in the morning now? And they think, oh, they've gone away. You know, I think sometimes we need to remind them from of where they've come from. And so that way they can really truly appreciate where they're going as well. Yes, it's been a big change in their life, uh, changing their diet. And as you said, for so, so many people, uh, there are many foods and, and drinks and things that we become attached to for all sorts of reasons. But when you look at the benefits of leaving some of those behind in the way you actually feel within yourself, you know, that's, that's a big plus. And the other benefits that we don't see like the internal benefits that we see when the doctor looks at your blood results and things like that. That's when the big pluses really, really um, you know, are notable. Um, so, yeah, I think, yes, it's hard to change. But, yeah, when you understand the benefits of the change, then you can really, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> This is my uh, <laughs> this is my oh, assistant. Yeah, he he has to be involved in all of my <laughs> my little talks whenever That's I'm doing cats. Cats can I, I can't tell you how many times I've been talking to people and cats will come into the, the video. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, he's my uh, he's my personal assistant. Um, all of my clients know him. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, as soon as usually as soon as I sit down, he's on my lap. Especially now in the oh. winter time when it's cold. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, he's. I love he's, it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry for the uh, no, uh, intrusion. No, no, he's beautiful. Keep him there; it's beautiful. Can I um, go back to your husband now? Because I'd love to talk to you about this, the Hashimoto's. Because uh, uh, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's a year ago too, and I've managed to. Um, I, I never actually went on medication, so um, I think I decided, well, I did decide um, that I wasn't going to go down that path. I was going to give it a go first. I mean, for me, I mean, it was a little bit, I'd say it was easier, but it actually wasn't because I was already, I already understood low carb. I was key, I was eating keto, the ketogenic way of eating. Um, and so for me, I went to carnivore uh, to to do, but I also had to I had to look at a lot of stuff that was non-diet related and you know that was um that was challenging but it was actually amazingly it was a it was a really lovely journey um but it helped me to see a lot around um well stress I guess from one of a better word you know just a lot of stuff that I was kind of sitting in and I, I hadn't really realized and um, it was a really good opportunity for me to do that. So I always say to people, you know, diet is one piece of the puzzle. Yes, it's amazingly important, but there are other pieces as well um, that we need to, that, you know, are beneficial to look at. Mm. But I'd love you to share um, what your husband saw um, around diet and and how he managed to put his Hashimoto's into remission because I think autoimmune is so misunderstood generally and, and look, there's so much we still don't know about it. Um, but you mentioned at the start of the chat all this range, this range of skin conditions that I don't even think people realise are actually autoimmune conditions. 
But can we start with Hashimoto's? What happened there? Yeah. What did he see? Okay. So he started um, doing low carb. So reducing his carbohydrate intake to around 20 grams of carbs a day. Um, and he felt a lot better and certainly started losing a little bit of weight. But it really wasn't, I mean, we made a lot of other changes to our lifestyle. So we got rid of all the chemicals in the house. We stopped using chemical cleaners. We got a water purification um, unit uh, put in our kitchen. So we got uh, filtered water. Um, so, you know, things like that because purified water, um, well, our, whilst we have amazing water here in Melbourne, it still does have a fair bit of chlorine and fluoride mm. and things like that, which can affect some people who are sensitive. Um, my partner is also quite sensitive to electromagnetic radiation and uh, his office where he works during the day was at the front of the house, which was very close in close proximity to the smart meter. And so we moved him away from that as well. Um, so that definitely helped and vertigo. But it was, I think the big changes really happened for him when he became carnivore, without a doubt. Going carnivore was, um, uh, he loved it. Um, yeah. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> always... <laughs> Neat, then. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, he, he's in heaven having bacon and eggs for breakfast every day and sausage and <laughs> liver and all of those good things. Um, yeah, no, happy hours. Um, so yeah, it, that definitely made a big difference. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of everything. I think it was a combination of everything all together. Um, I would have to say the, um, the removal from the EMF was also a big factor for him. Um, not everyone is as sensitive to electromagnetic radiation. Um, I, it certainly doesn't affect me the way it does. Well, when I say that, I don't, experience physical symptoms but apparently it does affect us all um in some way or another but other people some people don't just don't get symptoms from it whereas mm -hmm. he did um so yeah that might be something you know that you could possibly look into for yourself tracy but um yeah so like we don't use wi-fi in the house um because of that um which is okay because it's just him and i in the house we don't have children you know wanting to on the internet all the time so like we have our computers <laughs> hardwired and things like that so yeah no wi-fi oh, right. here so little things like that but i would say definitely the big kick out was going carnival um so we've both been car full carnival now for two years and you as well Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, He's been doing it for wow. about two and a half years and I've been carnivore for two years. Um, look, really? I have. The, yeah, I yeah. I have the, oh, I've got to ask you about this next. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, I, look, I do have avocados. Um, yeah, I probably have at least half an avo a day, if not a whole one a day. Uh, great fats. Um, but, yeah, pretty much for the rest, um, virtually all carnival. Uh, look, when we go out, we do enjoy other things. We have veggies, you know, our favourite restaurant, uh, you know, which is an Italian restaurant near where we live. They do the most amazing thing with silver beet. Oh, my God, it's just divine. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's that's our big treat. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, yeah, we eat. I have a lovely big ribeye every night and, um, yeah, we have eye fillet and we have, uh, lamb cutlets and we have lots of chicken livers cooked in butter and um yeah i have roast chicken when i go to work with eggs and yeah all sorts of yeah and bacon and we make our own sausages and all all, all that good stuff so yeah really good oh wonderful so i'm curious then um a couple of things does his carnival look slightly different to yours again um just that whole um, there's no one size fits all. So how you know how has it does it look uh, you know between you both? Is it different slightly? Uh, do you kind of both eat the same thing? Yeah, no, we both pretty much eat the same thing. Although he's sort of just lately because uh, he wanted to see how uh, he really we we both had a DEXA scan about twelve months ago, and because we wanted to see you know what our you know, how our visceral fat and how our fat was looking, basically. Anyway, um, 
So he had a bit more visceral fat than I did, uh, which he was a bit cut about. <laughs> and um, but being a woman, obviously women have you know, we do carry a little bit more subcutaneous fat. So I had more subcutaneous fat than he did, less visceral fat. Um, he is as lean as a whippet. He has very little subcutaneous fat, um, but he did have a little bit more visceral fat. So what he wanted to do was try and get that down a little bit further. So whereas I have a ribeye at night, which has lots of lovely fat on it, he, um, just for the last probably couple of months, he has been having eye fillets instead. You know, just to cut down his fat intake a little bit, yeah, to see if he can bring the visceral fat down. Hasn't really um, shown up any difference on the scales we need to go and have another DEXA scan I think to to see whether that's actually made a difference to the visceral fat but um for the you know yeah scales wise we're both the same but um yeah feel amazing like, no yeah. aches, no like skin's as clear as anything uh probably the best it's ever been I'm I'm 58 so I think I'm sort of ticking along fairly well um oh. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I sort of think of my mother at my age. She had really bad rheumatoid arthritis. She uh, she was told she needed a hip replacement. She had dreadful, um, like her hands, she'd already had like two or three surgeries on her hands for the rheumatoid in the, uh, her finger joints. And um, I don't have an ache or pain anywhere. I just feel amazing. I bounce out of bed in the morning. Um, I sleep exceptionally well. I had a few issues going through menopause, but that was before I found low carb. Mm. Um, and certainly whilst being on low carb, I don't get any hot flushes. I don't have any of those sort of menopausal symptoms that do worry a lot of women. I've helped coach several women now going through menopause and uh, help them reduce the severity of their hot flushes and night sweats and, um, yeah, which is, and it helps amazingly for all of those yeah. things. So, yeah, I would say generally much, much better. And as uh, another nice little side effect um, that I picked up on my DEXA scan too was, um, so I had, a, I had a bone density scan when I was 50 and because my mum had osteoporosis as well and um, so I thought oh, I don't want to go down the same track as my mum. Uh, my diet was certainly at 50 a lot better than mum's was but um, yeah I still wanted to make sure that I my bones were safe and at that time uh, I was told that I had the bones of a 50 year old so you know they were good they were sound there was no sign of osteoporosis or osteopenia which was good but I thought hmm bones of a 50 year old anyway um yeah so yeah I was sort of Amazing. thought a little bit meh so I like a lot of people started taking calcium supplements and things like that um you know doing uh, resistance training certainly helps um, improved bone density and I've been doing resistance training for many many years so I thought my bones would have been a little bit better than that started doing the carnivore diet yeah just over two years ago so I'd been carnivore for a full 12 month 12 months before I had the second that the DEXA scan done last year and the DEXA scan showed that I had the bones of a 25 year old so, yes, wow. and that's what I thought too, you know, and uh, I'd stopped taking the calcium supplements. The only yeah. supplements that I take are salt, magnesium, and a little bit of potassium every now and then. Um, mm. And through winter, I take a bit of uh, extra vitamin D. D. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so That's exactly like me. Yeah, mm, same same supplements. The change in my bone density, um, I attribute to the increased protein intake. Yes. So yeah, which and of course you know the diet much higher in all the essential nutrients. So I mean, I do have a lot of bone broth and stuff as well, which is you know hugely uh, nutrient dense. Got all those wonderful minerals. But yeah, massive improvement. So you know, just in a couple of years. Uh, seven years I'd gone from the bones of a 50-year-old to the bones of a uh, 25-year-old. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> yes. And yeah, again, so big it's, um, it's, it's amazing how uh, am amazing our bodies are and the capacity mm. that it has to heal. Um, I love that because I've, I, uh, I'm not sure you know of Dr. Ken Berry. Um, he has talked, yeah, a lot about it's protein 
you know, that our bodies yes. need to, yes. to keep our bones strong. And um, I remember watching something he said about calcium supplements, how they actually can be um, inhibitors. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating. But again, you know, we've been led to believe that it's calcium, calcium, calcium. Um, exactly. And of course, yep. as we know, so many people don't eat enough protein, especially as we age, yet it's so important to just keep getting it in. And I look at you. I mean, fa it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because um, a lot of people don't realise as we age, we our gut actually doesn't absorb protein as efficiently. So it is really important as we get older. So 50 plus, um, and particularly women post-menopause, you definitely do need to increase your uh, protein intake to make sure that you're actually getting enough because people think bones are made of calcium and, and minerals but they are actually full of potassium as well. Uh, sorry, protein, protein, protein. Protein yes. is a building block of every single cell. So it is absolutely essential that we get enough protein in our diet. And as a species, the best protein source for us is animal products. So meat, mm -hmm. eggs, um, yeah. And as Sean Baker, our, uh, <laughs> who's a, another... He, I'm a huge fan of him as well. Um, yeah, look, he's a, he's a, a giant advertisement, walking advertisement for the benefits of uh, a red meat. So, and yeah, and there are many, many others as well. So what happens with, um, as we age, why doesn't our gut absorb the protein as well? Do you know? Is that just a, it's just a natural aging thing or is it because generally our guts are so much poorer now than they used yeah. to be? Yeah. Yeah, look, I'm not really sure. I think it may be the um, just part of the aging process does change the the internal lining of the gut. Um, so, yeah, whether the the surface area um, becomes diminished or lessened, or it just doesn't absorb as efficiently. I know the digestive enzymes can um, sometimes decrease, but that it that also works on a supply and demand as well so you know even for people who've had their gallbladders removed for instance you know we know that you know after a couple of weeks doing low carb they their liver still can produce enough bile for them to adequately break down the fat or increase fat in a uh, low carb high fat diet um, so our whilst our gut does compensate quite well, it does seem that there um, is a, a reduced ability to absorb protein. The exact uh, process in that, I'm not exactly sure, but mm. that's a good question and I'll look into it. Mm. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> great. Um, I was hoping, um, so my final question before we wrap it up is um, when someone comes to you, so uh, you know, I mean, I have men and women listening to the podcast, but predominantly it's um, women. Uh, so if someone, a lady comes to you um, looking, uh, you know, like same, I get most people, they start with weight loss. That's kind of the what, in, you know, inspires them to come in the first place. But, of course, as we know, that's, that's a symptom and there's so much behind that that we can look at. But I'm interested in how you um, determine how something, how a, an optimal diet should look for your client um, because you, we've talked about low carb and of course we know low carb is a, an umbrella for for many you know some people do well moderate carbs you and I are both carnivore um, but there's a range in that so how do you help your client determine what you know how it should look for them yeah. Yeah. Look, I, that's a good question. I think it's a little bit of a process uh, for some people, you know, particularly initially, if they have some sort of um, like an autoimmune disorder, for instance, I think the first priority is to try and address the actual health problems that may be present get that under control so you know if it's diabetes or if it's rheumatoid arthritis for instance you know we look at um, probably severely carb restricting so I might start particularly a diabetic on maybe 20 grams of carbs a day for the first week and see how they go and I monitor, monitor them very very carefully we monitor blood glucose uh, before and after meals just to see how they are adapting and making sure that they're they're staying safe um, with if it's another autoimmune like uh, arthritis or something like that, again, it's just sort of monitoring their symptoms and see how they're managing. Um, most of them, as you 
uh, as you know, you know, when they're given the right tools, they can actually adapt their their diet quite quickly uh, to uh, a relatively low carb, usually within a week or two. And in that first two weeks, it's a, the dramatic changes that they feel in, uh, you know, just the way they're feeling generally, but also, um, you know, that ad adaptation uh, phase that can sometimes they can experience, um, you know, it is a little bit unnerving, but, you know, with gentle encouragement, they certainly get through it. And once they're through that, it's like a metamorphosis. Then it's a matter of finding their happy space, I guess, their carb or their a limit as to how much carbohydrates they can have. Um, yeah, so working out what is uh, the ideal therapeutic level for them, and that's going to be different for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, I think... Um, uh, there was a new, there was a book, it's actually not new, it's been around for a little while, the, the New Atkins, um, which is, hang on, I've got it. Mm -hmm. oh, I've got mountains of books everywhere. Yeah. But uh, this is actually a really, really good one for clients who have, they've reached their weight loss goals or they've reached sort of, you know, like a, a point where they're feeling really, really good. Reading that can give them and, and it sort of helps you um, steer them into a direction where they can find, you know, perhaps increase their carbs a little bit um, but and find a place where they feel really, really good uh, and still have all the benefits of being moderately low carb mm. um, but not too restrictive. They can still have a life as well. Yeah, that's really important, isn't it? Because it's kind of like the well, where to where to now, and people do struggle, I think, to find that a balance. Um, and I loved how you talked about that. You know, you go out for dinner and you'll have some some veggies, and you know, I think that's really important for people to know that because I'm like that too. You know, like I, um, you know, occasionally I'll, I'll have berries and cream because I I still. Mm feel like that you know like I, yeah, yeah. even though I, can't, I try and sort of say I don't have rules I, I kind of eat mostly the food that does make me feel the best and definitely fuels me the best but sometimes I'll have I still have some dark chocolate or even some VitaWorks white chocolate you know sometimes and I'll have some <laughs> you know I know um, and I'll have some berries and cream and mm. if we go out for dinner so my husband's Greek and we're in you know, we're near Oakley oh. so it's like oh. happens Oh, oh, no, we, I know. We're very, lucky. Yeah, yeah. very lucky. And we will go, I'll have a Greek salad. You know, I'll have a bit of salad. You know, I think it's 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 really finding that for us as the individual, um, there's no rules. There's just what works for us. And, you know, sometimes we will eat things that we probably wished we didn't, but that's okay. We we can let that go and just focus on what we do for most of the time. And, yeah, I, I think that's really um, important and people do struggle with that sometimes, don't they? But I think, too, listening to your body, and I think this is something that I tell my clients, too, listen to your body because your body will tell you how certain foods will make you feel. Now, if you have um, that croissant, how did, how did it make you feel afterwards? You know, did, did your aches and pains in the joints come back again or did you get a bit of a head the sugar or, you know, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, everyone will have a different response to every single different food because uh, we are all unique creatures. So it is a matter of finding what suits us best. I have to say, I really, really love being carnivore. I just, Me too. I love, I love it too. I love feeling so great. I love the energy that I have. I love that I don't have to worry about the scales because. My weight stays really constant. I don't feel hungry at all. I am not a slave like some of my work colleagues who, you know, they just are constantly craving foods all the time. And I just think, oh, you poor things. I'm so glad I don't have that. You know, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's a good way to be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was certainly how I used to be. I mean, food, it was, I was Same. always thinking about food. And you see that, don't you, you know, that, when our bodies really are not fueled or they're they're struggling in some way, it's kind of why I think that we we have to think about food all the time. But when we can, you know, you you go this way and you feel it, and it's like, oh, you know, and it does it just does take a while for people yep. to get there. It's not an you know, it isn't an overnight thing. I mean, that's really really important. I get clients all the time that are like, oh, I haven't lost any weight, and you know, but everyone else is losing so much weight. And I was like, 
no, no, they're not, you know, like everyone's doing it in their own way and their own, you know, it, it does take time. It just, you just got to give it time. You got to keep exploring, be kind with yourself. Um, yeah. And Very I, I love that. Yeah. Listen to your body because, and it's not, not your brain, not the brain that says, oh, I want to eat a packet of biscuits every night. Listen to the symptoms of your body. So for me, it was, if I, um, I realized that obviously things like, um, the, the lectins oh. were affecting me. <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't really noticed it, but it was yeah that was bloating. It was heat, um, and yep. it was this just this tiredness I would get after I had kind of over had a lot of those sweets, which I didn't even know were a problem. Um, and you know yeah you just you just get better at listening to it, don't you? And it is telling you something, um, but we yep. just All tapping into it takes time. <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. But, uh, oh, gosh, you know, in my bodybuilding days, I wish I knew then what I know now about diet. Oh, my God, it would have been so much easier. Um, But, yeah, gosh, yeah, I look at Sean Baker and he just sort of, you know, awesome. I bet you he doesn't do anywhere near the, the amount of cardio that, you know, you would think looking at the size of him. And, yeah, and he's ripped. He just looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he does much. I think he does the rower every now and again, but it's mostly just like lifting heavy. And I think he's gotten into um, martial arts, like a bit of wrestling, you know, that type of thing. Oh, recently. that's right. Yeah, he has too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it's, fant- it's fantastic. Well, um, perhaps before we finish, you could just, uh, is there any sort of words of wisdom or a little bit of advice you'd like to give people listening around anything that was, um, I don't know, just, a nice message that you might like to leave with our listeners. Yeah, I think, you know, just be kind to yourself. Um, be kind, yeah, listen to your body. That I think is one of the most important things. Um, you know, when your body's sending you signals like aches and pains and, you know, something's not quite right. So, you know, it's sort of telling you be kind to yourself, be gentle, maybe, you know, cut back on something to try and identify what's causing those aches and pains because there will be a cause. Um, You know, yeah, give yourself some time and spoil yourself. I think as mothers, you know, we are particularly engrossed in looking after the family i mean that is you know part of one of what one of our jobs one of our many jobs as most mums but um i think our number one job should be to look after yourself because without you the rest of the family falls apart so be kind to yourself look after yourself feed yourself good food uh that is probably the best uh, advice I can give you. Um, mm. Yeah, make sure it's whole, real, natural, wonderful food because it just benefits your body in so many ways that you can't even begin to imagine until you experience it because uh, yeah. it is a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love that. I love that. One of my favourite sayings at the moment is put your own mask on before you help others. You know, I think it is so easy as a mom to just fall for the I don't have time I've just got, have some quick peanut butter toast oh my gosh that was me you know years ago just that looked like the easiest option and you know and I did suffer for it and my health suffered for it and then yes that's right I mean if I'm tired all the time I'm not the best mum I'm grumpy and you know it does flow from us and I, I think we just have to take some steps back And if we can make it important within us, we will find the time to look after ourselves and it just affects everyone better, you know, in a better way when we do. Absolutely. Yeah. You sleep better. You will feel better. Everything is better. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. It's so lovely to have met you. And thank you so much for coming and chatting and sharing your amazing insight and knowledge and wisdom with us today. It's been such a pleasure, Pauline. And if anyone's interested in finding you, of course, I have all the information below on how they can connect with you. But thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure, Tracy. And I look forward to catching up um, on many more occasions. Yes, and lovely because you were in Melbourne too. We yes, I know. You were face to face. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep, you're just down the road. So easy peasy. <laughs> lovely. Thanks. We'll go and lady. share a steak. <laughs> yes. Yes, we will. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye.